Good evening, everyone. This is obviously a picture of the Italian air demonstration team, Freccia Tricolori. And if you look carefully at the top of the picture, the distance between one aircraft's wingtip and the tail of the aircraft next to it is around 80 centimeters. Yeah, I said right, 80, 80 centimeters. Uh, it varies during the air show between 80 centimeters and 1.5 meters. Uh, the speeds are in the average of 300 knots, which is slightly uh, below 600 kilometers an hour. And uh, the next slide, please. When, uh, when we uh, do formation crossings, the uh, distance between the two formations uh, is a few meters, and the relative speed is above 1,000 kilometers an hour. How do we do that? Uh, a lot of people ask me, yeah, here's the formation crossing. A lot of people ask me, hey, yeah, you must have uh, incredible computers in order to manage that. And uh, my uh, answer normally amazes them because, uh, ironically, we're sitting in a high, in a concentrated high technology, and we hardly use any of that technology for formation flying uh, as we rely on eyes and our senses. Um, it's called seat of the pants flying. Basically, it means our body feels uh, everything that goes on and reacts accordingly. Uh, I'll tell you a little story about this. When I started flying commercial aircraft, big airplanes, they put me in a simulator, and uh, I was feeling nauseous. I was, uh, I was having problems. I was uh, physically sick because all of a sudden, my butt is lying to me. You know, it, it never lied for 20 years, and all of a sudden, it starts lying to me. Because what I see and what I feel are not the same thing. Uh, simulators have a very good visual system, and they have a motion system, which cannot fool any good pilot. So I had to spend months working hard to, uh, to eliminate the sensations, to turn disregard the sensations that my body was feeling, and try to uh, uh, only rely on uh, my sight, my eyes, what I was seeing. Uh, during an air show, there, was, uh, there are quite a few variables induced, obviously. One of them is the terrain morphology. Other ones are uh, the weather. The uh, wind speed and directions are uh, extremely important during an air show. So is the cloud base and the visibility. And then uh, the pilot. We are a variable ourselves. We don't perform the same way every day, so we can't rely on a standard performance to codify our, our, uh, our actual performance during the flight. So, uh, no two air shows are the same. In case of problems, we saw the speeds are and what the distances are, you may well appreciate that in case of problems, we need to uh, react fast. And we're talking hundreds of a second. How do we do that? Because uh, we cannot uh, make a consistent decision in a hundredth of a second. There's no way to do that. Uh, we need to uh, re revert to instincts. One problem there, our instincts evolved uh, to enable us to climb trees and chase animals, and certainly not to fly uh, high-performance aircraft. So here there's uh, a, a need to, uh, we cannot rely on pure instincts because they're very fast, lightning fast, but inadequate and inaccurate. So here's the need to uh, uh, educate and train our instincts so as to have a quick reaction, uh, a, a blink of an eye, but it must be an educated one. It must be a, a consistent one, consistent with the situation we're in. Uh, well, how do we do that? Um, we build a mental equation that contains as many of the parameters as, po as possible of the situation surrounding us, uh, the weather situation, the wind comes from, and this and that, so that in case of need, we only have to insert that very little parameter that was missing, and the situation will be solved. Uh, this equation has to be constantly updated throughout the air show uh, to compensate for our position in space, for instance, and, uh, and, and all the variables involved during the flying itself. And I, I'm not an expert in car racing or motorbike racing, but I'm quite an expert in, uh, in uh, high-performance airplane flying. 
And I think uh, the difference between an excellent pilot and an average one is the ability to perform his task. The excellent pilot has the ability to perform his task using only a certain percentage of his CPU, of his brain power, so as to leave uh, a sizable amount of his CPU time to uh, uh, improve his situational awareness and, uh, and, uh, and adapt it to the, the contingent situation. Uh, the, flying, the, the, the high performance flying itself is not, uh, uh, is not easy, it's very demanding, and there are quite a few uh, problems, emergency situations, and so on. Not so in the civilian airline flying, obviously, thankfully. And I don't, need, I don't mean to scare you people by telling you an experience I've had uh, a few years ago in 2004. Uh, it, it was one of the few occasions where during civilian flight, I had to put to work these uh, uh, concepts I just uh, uh, told you about. Uh, it was 2004, and the, uh, the flight, uh, I was flying a 767-300 from Fiumicino to Havana, and we were in Fiumicino uh, on the runway, 287 passengers, fully loaded airplane, max takeoff weight. And during the takeoff, the right engine explodes. That was the result. Huge fire. And uh, it happened at the worst possible moment, which is a few knots before V1. V1 is a speed that pilots compute beyond which speed uh, the airplane cannot anymore stop on the, on the runway remaining, so you, you have to take off. However, that happened three or four knots before V1. And if I'd followed standard procedures, I would have stopped. And if I had stopped that day, I would have killed people. Because there was uh, quite a strong wind from the right side during the takeoff, and with the right engine exploding and, and uh, a lot of fuel on board, during the time I spent to stop on the runway, the wind would have brought the flames towards the plane, and they would have hit the cabin, and people would have died. And I elected to go. There is no way that my brain could have made that decision, uh, con considering all the parameters, in about one third of a second, which is what it took me to, uh, what, what took me to uh, to decide to uh, continue the uh, the takeoff. And that happened because before the takeoff. I did it, and I do it every time, and I do it unconsciously even. I am absorbing all the parameters, which is what good pilots do really, absorbing all the parameters and building a mental picture of my surroundings, which is called situation awareness. And my mind knew automatically where the wind would be coming from during the takeoff, which is from my right. So in one third of a second, I realized that the right engine is on fire, and now we're in trouble if I stop, so we continued. And we came back to land safely, no problem, nobody got hurt. Uh, the, the fire didn't stop, so we had to come back heavy weight, but uh, there was another story. So, uh, there are quite a few people here, scientists and, uh, and uh, scholars, uh, involved in, uh, anti into, in artificial intelligence, human-machine interface, autonomous driving, driving and flying. And, uh, my idea today is that uh, I want to throw there a, a little challenge. Well, it's not little, it's a big challenge. That if we uh, drive a car on a day-to-day -day basis going to work and back, we are there already. We have cars going by themselves, really. But if we want to fly or drive or ride a motorbike in a racing environment or a high, very demanding environment such as, uh, as uh, high performance flying, we need to introduce some uh, instincts. I don't know how to call them, but to me they're artificial instincts. Every one of us uh, has been driving one day and we feel there's something wrong. There's no clues out there telling us what's wrong, but we feel it with our skin. Something is wrong and the hair rises on the back of our neck. And then, sure enough, something happens. So, instincts, in a way, help us to prevent something and, and to prevent something. And uh, we, the challenge to, to the people studying artificial intelligence will be to uh, 
approximate uh, instinct, instinctive reaction to try and predict what's going to happen rather than, than to react to what's happened, I'll bite fast. Thank you very much.